Hey guys, welcome back to Big Drew of the World. I'm Coach Allen. We have a little bit different video for you this time. I wanted to take some time to stop and get into a little career development, get into little stories from my personal time as a coach and tell you a little bit on how I went from a JV offensive line coach and defensive coordinator to the youngest head coach in the state of Virginia. Um, so, me, right now, if you liked what we got going on, Hit subscribe, follow us at football underscore Allen. I'm going to give you three tips for career development right here as an offensive line coach. If you want to develop and become an offensive coordinator, become a head coach. Three tips to give you guys. I'm young in the profession. I've only coached 10 years, but I've been a head coach. I'm getting ready to be just a varsity offensive line coach. I've been a JV coach. I've done everything, and I'm only 28. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about myself um, as we talk about this. Uh, let's talk about my three tips, and I'll sort of get into them. I'll get into them a little bit here. four tips. I'll talk about why each is important and how each sort of played a role into what I did. So the first one is build your portfolio. Okay. What did I do? Build your portfolio. You can take it two ways. You can think about it as, as I get that set up. You can think about it as building your resume. Um, ways that, you know, I don't want to address it as like job chasing. I've never been a job chaser in my life. Um, you know, I turned down jobs to stay at my home high school. And I was never a job chaser. But I did build my portfolio. Um, as a JV coach, we were on a solid staff at Buckingham County High School. Um, I think out of the seven guys we had my last three years there, we had – I became a head varsity football coach. Our defensive coordinator became a head varsity football coach. Our linebackers coach became a head varsity basketball coach. Our JV head coach became a varsity offensive coordinator. Our varsity offensive coordinator became a 5A, I think, at one point. We're 2A school, and he became a 5A defensive coordinator. So, I mean – very good, very good team, very good coaching staff. So it's hard for me to really elevate my status as far as like, oh, you need to be a coordinator or, oh, you need to be the varsity offensive line coach. I was working behind our head coach. Oh, you need to be varsity defensive coordinator. Well, the varsity defensive coordinator is pretty darn good. Uh, he's a head coach there. He's doing an unbelievable job, but I think he's one of the best defensive minds I've ever been around. So what do you do? You could be a guy who chases a job and tries to get out of there, but I warn against it because you could be chasing the wrong job. Um, so I think you can build your portfolio in different ways. What did I do? For me, the JV program became my baby. Uh, you know, I took, you know, for me, controlling kids' academics became my baby. So I was checking grades, running academic coordinating, um, trying to help kids with GPA. I was, I started something called the Feed the Nights program when I was there. I did all the little outside things outside of X's and O's. Meanwhile, I was getting better at the X's and O's all along, learning from this great staff. But, you know, I was one of the youngest kids on the staff. Um, and I was doing jobs that basically nobody wanted to do. Who ran the team Facebook page? I ran the team Facebook page. You know, who ran getting meals organized on Friday and Thursday nights? I did that. You know, who helped with the laundry? I did that. Who did that? You know, and the whole time I'm learning from everybody else. Now, meanwhile, what else did I do to build my portfolio and get better? 
you know, I applied for internships. I did work at camps when Mike London was the head coach at UVA. Um, I applied for something. It's now called NC AFCA 35 under 35, I believe. But when I was there as Future Football Coaches Academy, I got to work with guys. I got a mentor at the now head coach at Frostburg State, Delane Fitzgerald. Um, and, man, I just went all around the place trying to learn. Guys, I went on an eight-hour interview to one of the top 4A schools in the state. And, you know, I eventually turned down a job offer there because it came a few weeks later. Ironically, would be teaching middle school, and I accept, and I'm now teaching middle school. But um, that coach wasn't upset. He's been a great mentor. I've gone over to see him run practice for two or three times and to see how, you know, his program runs. So, you know, I built my portfolio, and that kind of leads me into the second thing, which was expand your horizon and learn. Be willing to go to spring practice, guys. Be willing to go to clinics. Be willing to go and talk to coaches of stuff that you want to learn. Okay, now I'm not saying, okay, understand what I'm saying when I say this, okay? If I was at Buckingham and I went to learn the air raid offense, that's great. Learning the air raid actually was great for my career um, because I got to see a different way to run football. When I was at Buckingham, I wasn't going to go clinic with an air raid person because it would just hurt. Um, it wouldn't bring value to my team at that point. But I started studying the air raid. Open up some books, man. I got a great library in there. For books. I got into learning the air raid because I started reading coaching biographies and read about Mike Leach and Bill Walsh. And, you know, it was a different way to play football. Um, so I expanded my horizons there. Started reading about different defenses. Started getting all these different books. And now the first thing you're going to do is try to put everything in. Don't. That's why I like my head coach I have right now, a guy named Andy Cox. He, uh, he studies the game. He wants to learn the game. I call him the most humble head coach I've ever seen in, like, any sport ever. He just wants to learn the game. You know, he gets excited about getting books on, like, different defensive coverages or getting a book, book on the Notre Dame box. Learn different principles of the game, man. Um, go get outside of your position group. If you go to a spring practice, I'm going to tell you right now, a school near me that I love to go to their spring practice. I wish they'd had spring practices here because I would have gone was North Carolina. I like what Phil Longo does. He runs a different air raid than I do. I'm not a quarterback guy. I'm an offensive line guy. But I like going and watching what he does with quarterbacks. I like watching their receivers coaches. I like watching how Mac Brown runs his program. And I hate UNC. I'm a Duke fan. Um, but just get out of your horizon, you know, expand your horizon. Talk to different coaches. Um, talk to different coaches. Get different mindsets. Get a mentor if you have to. Number three, don't be afraid of work. Guys, I went from being a JV grunt to a head football coach. Okay. Now, some of the work I had to put in on my own, when I went in for an interview to be the head football coach at Chatham High School, I compiled a document of everything from practice schedule to how the laundry was done to how we recruited kids. It was like 350 pages, man. A daily schedule, coaching responsibilities, everything. All this stuff. What I found was a lot of it was applicable, but it meant I had to work hard. And it meant my coaching staff had to work hard. Sometimes I've happens a lot of times it didn't you know you have to adjust to that by suggesting you you be that type of assistant that's willing to bust your butt that's willing to work hard and you gotta be willing to do stuff besides just i'm an x's and o's guy and i don't help with laundry or i don't help paint a field or i don't help fill up a water cooler have some humility about yourself okay i'm gonna hop on that for a second who are you to not fill up a water cooler guys Guys, I've had to coach practice in khakis and a button down before because I came from school 
had something to handle and had to fill up a water cooler fast and didn't have time to change. Because when I was a head coach, I was driving from middle school to high school. So who are you to tell me it sums above your pay, below your pay grade, that you're above that? You know, as a head coach, I did laundry. You know how I got the bomb with my head coach? Because I sat around, I helped him do laundry. I helped him fill up coolers. I helped him do that type of stuff. And it goes back to the, time, the ability to learn. If you're a young guy, maybe stick to those guys who are, those older guys, because I'm going to tell you right now, in a small school environment, probably, your head coach is doing a lot. And if you want to learn a lot, stick to him. Well, that means doing grunt work. Last one, enthusiasm. Take each job. That's one of the things I'm proudest of is I took each job. How's that? Whether I was the JV defensive coordinator or as a head coach. And I went at it every day knowing I loved what I was doing and I was going to attack with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind, to quote Jack Harbaugh. And, you know, that enthusiasm means I got excited for Thursday JV games, man. I've tried to build that into a program. The guy I worked with was fantastic about that. He gave me running room and we worked well together. It meant when I was at Chatham and we were rough, starting three and seven, one and nine, I got excited. I built a program. We built social, built it up on social media. We built it up on, you know, feeding our kids, getting our kids gear, remodeling the locker room, doing everything you need to do. I woke up every day. And I think this pandemic has slowed me down a little bit, but I'm, I decided to get back in the weight room. I decided, um, as we've seen our kids, seeing who's going to be coming out there for us. But I woke up every day wanting to make the program I was with better, whether I was a JV coach or a head varsity coach. You can do the same. Don't think about the next job. Don't think about, oh, I need to be a head coach by this time. I need to be a coordinator by this time. Guys, I was a head coach by 24. I wasn't ready at 24. I wasn't around enough people, I think, to really be ready. But you know what? You learn on the fly. You got to attach each job you have with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind, and I promise you it will take care of the rest. I hope you all enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different. Um, I just want to share some of my personal experiences. I was a 24 year old football head football coach and you know, my life from when I got that job in 2016 is 180 degrees different. Am I thankful for the years at it? Yes, I am. Um, are there some things I wish I knew then that I know now? Of course. I think everybody has that. You know, I hope you can take these tips advance your career if you want to guys you might have to take some crap jobs you know when i first got into coaching um i had to be a volunteer and then i got real lucky i got paid gas mileage going to college my second year and then that parlayed into a teaching position you know um be flexible when i got a head coaching position i was a high school history teacher that's what my degree is in and the only position they had available in the Chatham system of the county was um, middle school sixth grade math. So I went from being a 12th and 8th grade history teacher, passed my practice test, taught middle school math. I was adaptable. Okay, I was adaptable. I did what was necessary in that. Sometimes you're going to have to be adaptable, guys. You might find the perfect position. You might be, you know, the next great coach that finds a great position. Um, you might be coaching at a 5A or 6A school and go, well, none of this applies to me. Well, that's great. I think I became a better coach coaching at small schools. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful where I'm now and thankful to attack Alta Vista football.
with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind. Till next time, coaches. I'm Coach Al. See you later on Big World.